In December 2025, a new peer-reviewed study revisited the physics behind warp drives and proposed a refined theoretical design that better fits the equations of general relativity. The research does not claim faster than light travel is achievable today, but it does show that warp geometries can be structured in more realistic and stable ways than previously assumed. By reorganizing how spacetime distortion is distributed around a spacecraft, the study reduces some of the most extreme assumptions found in earlier models. In this video, we will examine what was proposed, why it matters scientifically, and what remains unsolved. Let's get started. Warp travel became a serious topic in physics in 1994, when physicist Miguel Alcubierre demonstrated that Einstein's equations allow a space-time configuration capable of producing effective faster-than-light motion. The key idea was that a spacecraft would not move through space faster than light. Instead, space itself would be reshaped, compressed ahead of the craft, and expanded behind it. Within this space-time distortion, the spacecraft remains locally stationary and never violates relativity. The difficulty was never mathematical consistency. It was physical feasibility. Alcubierre's original warp bubble required enormous quantities of negative energy, an exotic form of energy that classical physics does not permit. While quantum effects can produce extremely small and temporary negative energy densities, nothing known can generate them at meaningful scales. The new study, led by physicist Harold Sonny White and published in Classical and Quantum Gravity, does not eliminate this requirement. What it does instead is rethink the structure of the warp field itself. Rather than enclosing the spacecraft inside a single, continuous spherical warp bubble, the proposed design distributes space-time distortion across multiple discrete regions. These regions are described mathematically as Gaussian cylinders and are positioned away from the main body of the spacecraft. This configuration allows the spacecraft interior to remain in a comparatively flat and stable space-time region, while the extreme curvature required for warp motion is handled externally. In practical terms, the most intense space-time manipulation is shifted away from the vehicle itself. The study shows that warp effects do not require one rigid geometry, space-time distortion can be modular, directional, and separated into functional regions. This reduces sharp curvature gradients near the spacecraft and improves theoretical stability. The negative energy requirement is still present, but it is no longer spread across an entire enclosing shell. Instead, it is localized to specific regions, making the model easier to analyze and compare against alternatives. The central contribution of the study is not a workable engine design, but a demonstration that warp metrics are more flexible than previously assumed. Within general relativity, there is more than one way to shape spacetime for warp-like motion. That flexibility is the discovery. The significance of this research lies less in propulsion and more in fundamental physics. Warp metrics act as stress tests for general relativity. They push Einstein's equations into extreme regimes where space-time curvature behaves in unfamiliar ways. Studying these solutions helps physicists understand where the theory remains consistent and where deeper problems emerge. For decades, discussion of warp travel focused almost exclusively on the Alcubierre bubble. This created the impression that warp motion required a single, massive space-time distortion surrounding a spacecraft. The new study challenges that assumption by showing that similar effects can be achieved using separated space-time regions. This has theoretical consequences. It expands the range of allowable space-time topologies and demonstrates that warp-like behavior is not tied to one specific shape. That, in turn, allows physicists to explore trade-offs between stability, energy distribution, and curvature intensity. Another important contribution is conceptual clarity around exotic energy. Earlier models treated negative energy as a uniform requirement across large volumes of space. This study confines it to specific structures, sharpening the question of where classical physics fails and why. This does not make negative energy easier to obtain 
but it makes its role more precise. When theoretical obstacles are clearly localized, they become easier to analyze and harder to ignore. The work also highlights an interesting convergence between speculative design and physical constraints. Separating high-stress space-time regions from the spacecraft interior mirrors basic engineering principles, even though this work operates at a purely theoretical level. At the same time, the study reinforces existing limits. The need for negative energy implies violations of classical energy conditions, which remain one of the deepest unresolved issues in theoretical physics. These are not technical details that can be engineered away. They point to gaps in our understanding of space-time and vacuum energy. Alternative warp concepts exist, including models that avoid exotic matter by accepting lower speeds or extreme energy costs. So far, none offer a clean solution that preserves both physical realism and usefulness. In this context, the study does not overturn prior conclusions. It refines them. It narrows uncertainty by showing which assumptions can change and which cannot. That is why the work is taken seriously within the field. The immediate impact of this research is conceptual rather than practical. By introducing a modular warp geometry, the study provides a clearer framework for future analysis. Segmented space-time structures are easier to simulate, test for stability, and compare across different theoretical models. This allows for systematic exploration rather than isolated thought experiments. The work also improves understanding of how space-time responds to extreme curvature. Even if warp travel remains impossible, insights gained from these studies inform other areas of physics, including black hole dynamics and early universe cosmology. However, the central obstacle remains unchanged. Negative energy is still required, and no known physical process can produce it in the necessary quantities. Until that problem is addressed, warp drives will remain mathematical constructs. Future research is likely to focus on three directions. First, continued optimization of warp geometries to minimize exotic energy requirements. Even incremental reductions help clarify whether current limits are absolute or contingent. Second, deeper investigation into quantum vacuum behavior. While current quantum effects are far too weak, understanding how vacuum energy behaves under extreme conditions may reveal new theoretical constraints or possibilities. Third, experimental efforts aimed at precision measurements of space-time and vacuum effects. These would not test warp drives directly, but they could inform the underlying physics that warp concepts rely on. Warp research today occupies a familiar position in science. It is mathematically consistent, physically unresolved, and technologically unreachable. Similar positions were once occupied by black holes and gravitational waves, long before observational tools caught up. Whether warp travel will follow that trajectory is unknown. What is clear is that each refinement sharpens our understanding of space-time, even if practical applications never emerge. This study doesn't make warp travel possible, but it refines what physics actually allows. Negative energy remains the unsolved barrier, keeping warp drives theoretical for now. Even so, the work sharpens our understanding of space-time at its most extreme.